What's up, punks of the Cypher variety? Today is Tuesday, October 1st, and today we have a very special, special edition with a powerful member of the Bitcoin community, Lightning Dev and Lead Dev of the Lightning Wallet Zap, Jack Mallers. Jack, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Powerful member of the community. You're hilarious. Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It's going to be fun. Powerful indeed, man. The powerful Jack Mallers. And before we get started, we got... Some of the standard crew with us, Shinobi, Janine, how are y'all doing today? What's up? And you know, you, you are very uh, powerful. You're a very, uh, very charged uh, figure in the space, Jack. I'm going to run true. with that as a comedy. Better be. Better be a compliment. <laughs> it's a lightning pun, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, Janine, how are you today? Yeah, hey, so uh, um, I remember, if you, everyone remembers, uh, we had Jack, I think the last time he was on was episode 65, way back in 2017, uh, so good memories. Uh, I can't be here, unfortunately, for the rest of the episode, but I just wanted to say hey and hope you guys have a good time, and uh, I'll see you at the Lightning Conference, Jack. <laughs> oh, baller. Yeah, I appreciate uh, the good wishes, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Yep. Bye, everybody. Toodles, Janine. So Janine was here to say hello and goodbye. It's unfortunate, but everybody's got something they're working on. Well, it's unfortunate. Fortunate and unfortunate. We're all busy. But like she was saying, yeah, we've had Jack on the show back in episode 65. We actually had Jack and his dad on that episode. It was before we even had special editions. And uh, we were discussing on that episode the uh, shit that was Coinbase listing Bcash. And... Now it's almost a couple of years later from that episode, and Jack has a new feature coming out in the Zap Wallet that is sure to put companies like Coinbase on their heels to try and compete with new project Olympus. Yeah, Olympus, I don't know if you guys noticed, is a pretty great tweet and blog post out there. It looks to be the new way of onboarding into Bitcoin with quick, fast access to the Lightning Network and all that layer has to offer. And it's also non-custodial, and the capabilities go beyond just spinning over the Lightning Network, so... Yeah, Jack, uh, would you like to run us through Olympus and what else is going on there? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think even more broadly than Olympus, uh, the relationship that end consumers have with Bitcoin has been really, I mean, frankly, awful, right? Uh, Bitcoin's yeah. really complicated. It's technical. It's scary. It's for drug dealers. It's for terrorists. It's illegal. Uh, and so getting consumers to interface with it, have a relationship with Bitcoin, and then be able to use it for the cool things that it's marketed to do has been really tough. Um, and so Lightning and getting people onboarded onto Lightning, uh, that seems to be a really intuitive, obvious uh, thing to build, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's just about how quickly can I get someone from their bank account uh, to Lightning in a non-custodial way that – has the implications of onboarding millions of people, hopefully. So it's kind of the, the how and why of, of why I set out to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've been here in Boulder working uh, with your parents in that dispensary a little bit, trying to see how we could get people to take advantage of using Bitcoin and have a discount for their purchases. And it's really complicated. It's a clunky process trying to get people in to Bitcoin and where they're spending and there isn't much headache there for the customer. So to have this for them to where they could use it just seems like a, uh, yeah, it's a win for the customer. It's a win for the merchant. It's a win for the B Bitcoin network. Seems like wins all around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one one interesting thing I, I think about this and, you know, let me kind of put it to you uh, this, this way, you know, you can tell me if you were actually like setting out really to kind of create this divide, but you know, the, the way you've structured Olympus to just shove people directly into the Lightning Network, like I think what you've done is start, you've started building like a new type of on-ramp that is specifically catered just to people who are trying to use Bitcoin for actual retail usage. You know what I mean? Whereas like everything else out there right now is more geared towards like get it, receive it and hold it. And, you know, I think that's going to really over the next five to 10 years become a, a big divergence in like what type of on-ramp are you trying to be? Yeah, a hundred percent, man. I don't, I can't even take credit for that. So first I did it on purpose, of course. Um, but I can't take credit 
for the original idea is anyone that uses lightning and builds on top of lightning, it's so painfully obvious. Is Lightning right now is used for your retail use case, whether you like feeding chickens online or playing lightning spin or buying y'all's articles. Uh, it's these microtransactions that settle instant that are inherently cheaper. Uh, and getting people to experience that is really, really hard. Um, things like autopilot or submarine swaps, and I think they're all great, but uh, their scale, I don't think, is mainstream consumers. I think mainstream consumers need to be able to go from their debit card to Lightning instantly, and uh, Lightning wallets are hot wallets that need to be topped up. Uh, there's a lot of really cool use cases. I mean, you can envision someone buying a more sizable amount, let's say like $1,000, we deliver it instantly over Lightning, and then we allow them to submarine swap out uh, a certain percentage, like 90%, to their cold storage hardware wallet. There's, I mean, Olympus can deliver the Bitcoins in whichever way we see fit. Uh, I think there's a lot of exciting use cases. Certainly designed for, uh, I bump into a Lightning QR code on the internet, whether it's a video game or online website or internet commerce, and I need to be able to scan this QR code. And like, how do I do that? And to be able to do something like tap Apple Pay, top up with 10 bucks and scan it um, is a powerful use case. And we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of speculation even involved in whether people want to use Bitcoin this way. I have no idea. But surely we'll find out soon given, I mean, the tools are there and we're going to build it and roll it out over the next 12 months. So if people really have a demand to use Bitcoin in this way, they'll be able to. And we'll kind of get to the bottom of all that speculation. <laughs> mm hmm you know, it's just, it's, sorry, uh, real quick, Rick, I just wanted to add something. Um, you know, I think, like, one thing you should look at, Jack, is showing it as a way to safeguard against identity fraud. Uh, expand on that one, buddy. Well, you are only dealing in the fiat system through, um, you know, this whole process with the entity you're getting Bitcoin from. But you can go spend that Bitcoin anywhere that accepts it. So... Now, instead of giving your credit card information everywhere you go, um, you're only giving it to the one person. Yeah, a hundred percent. There's a lot of really more ambitious use cases uh, that are possible. So I think you're saying using Lightning more so as the rails to transfer and physically settle value um, and limit uh, the amount of exposure that a general consumer has with their personal information. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that's, yeah, that's certainly a little bit more ambitious, um, but a hundred percent, uh, in my brain and in the cards for sure. There's a lot of, I think that people, um, don't have a real accurate grasp on the privacy implications, both for the good and the bad, um, which I'm sure we'll get into on this podcast, but I've, I've seen some pretty interesting takes, uh, um, that, you know, were incorrect in the hype and incorrect in, uh, in the bashing of, of our service. But yeah, I think I think that's really, really valuable. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, even people bigger than, than Zap that already process a lot of payments today uh, realize that and, and use, start to use Lightning as more of an infrastructure piece that even exposed to the consumer at all. Well, yeah, that's where the Lightning Network and everything that's going on there, it's just, uh, it's so new and it's just, I mean, you know, just two years into development and there's still a lot of misconceptions and, you know, people are still, you know, finding the bugs and we're figuring things out. But it does uh, seem to be like we're still figuring out all the use cases for things such as Olympus or, you know, these little things like we were discussing the other day on payment points and discrete log contracts. And, uh, you know, well, I think the DLCs is not really lightning, but uh, yeah, I think it's got lightning in it. Yeah, it does. But anyway, like there's definitely a lot going on as far as lightning and moving forward and the possible use cases that could be found with services like Olympus and making sure that people are able to you know, quickly spend if they want to spend or just get their channels funded and, you know, do what they want with the with what they with those Bitcoins from there, you know, they could move back to the base layer. I mean, it just seems like there's a lot of interesting things to build out there. All right. But let's uh, I guess like let's keep going on here. I guess uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the licensing and getting that because I know that's a big deal with, uh, you know, you guys have minimal KYC and people can 
you know, sign in and they can buy some of these Bitcoins, but that takes the proper licensing. And I know that was a whole headache of a process. So yeah, is there any way you can just run us through what that's like as far as getting proper licensing to, you know, get into this game? Yeah, of course. Um, a lot of that stuff is not binary um, in the sense that there is no official KYC rule. Uh, it really depends on your use use case, the amount users are purchasing, how they're going about doing it. Um, there's even user stories where depending on how users decide to purchase, we, they don't need to KYC at all because the actual entity that's purchasing already has enough information about them. So I, I tried really, really hard, man. I don't want anyone sending me their social security number. It's ridiculous. Top up your lightning wallet for $20. That's absurd. Um, so it was just a lot of educating people that frankly have no interest in understanding a lot of these protocols. So firstly explaining that Lightning isn't a token, explaining that there are some privacy enhancements to Lightning that break a lot of uh, blockchain analysis programs, uh, understanding the delivery mechanisms that we would go about, uh, understanding that the user has a relationship that lasts longer than the initial delivery, saying that we're non-custodial is true. Uh, and saying that we're delivering the asset to their custody immediately is true, but we have a relationship that lives with them forever because we have a channel. We're channel partners, and how they transact is is through us as well. So a lot of that was interesting. Um, regulators honestly aren't out to get anybody. Uh, they just want to understand what's going on, and they don't care to understand, so that's the hard part. But uh, it's good, man. I, I, I'm just really proud that uh, I did it myself. And then I'm I'm going to continue, Zap, we're going to get this service really um, around the world, not just the United States. Uh, and so understanding the difference between uh, broker-dealer, MSB, money transmitter, two-party exemptions, there's a lot of ways we've architected the back end of various times to comply with certain uh, legal tactics uh, and compliance to expedite getting this out as far as, far as the, the eye can see. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud that I did it myself because I, the whole point of this was I don't want to rely on the Coinbase or the or the Cash Apps of the world. I think uh, having an open source project that has licenses is kind of the way I see it is the good guys got the licenses this time and someone has to go first and put the pressure on the Coinbases of the world. And uh, I don't I have no problem being that guy. I got nothing to lose. <laughs> so yeah, I, the licensing was big. It was big. I, I appreciated the process for all that it was. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, I mean, you know, to see you guys, you know, going out there and doing what's necessary because, you know, the Coinbase is of the world and the Cash Apps, you know, they kind of are just running pretty with where their position is and, you know, where are they going to innovate? Who knows? So it's just great to see you guys moving forward in this direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you actually want to kind of like break down uh, for me, Jack, like how many like different ways have you like designed for as far as people to actually get the, the fiat to you uh, in this process? Yeah, the fiat, are you talking about just traditional payment processing from fiat to whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so listen, I would accept toenails if I could. I don't care how people <laughs> buy Bitcoins. Um, so... so uh, we'll have ACH, Wire, uh, Google Pay, Apple Pay, MasterPass, debit card, credit card. Um, so Olympus is a standalone component, and all the Zap clients will forever remain open source, and you know KYC is never required. Uh, what Olympus is is a separate standalone service, handles requests, and it almost acts as like a proxy and understands what the request is uh, and how to best forward it along. Uh, so we have. I've established various partnerships to pull all of this off. Uh, really big trading firms here in Chicago, um, certain processors. We'll start processing ourselves eventually. Um, and so, yeah, I guess if you have a certain interest in any of the particulars there. Uh, but I think it, it's pretty important to note that traditionally services like this come as like your traditional broker that custodies your coins uh, and they all look the same. Coinbase looks kind of looks like Cash App, which kind of looks like the rest of them. And uh, I really took the time to understand what is the value that is needed and what has, isn't solved and how can we best do it in a non-custodial way. Because, I mean, Lightning's really important in uh, non-custodial asset delivery uh, and our clients are open source and we have a really big, uh, I mean, infrastructure piece there. 
So I think it's pretty unique in how we designed it. And because of this, too, we were able to comply with a lot of the legal party exemption clauses and, and stuff in specific states. Uh, so that was really cool. But yeah, I don't know. Do you have a specific interest in, in one of those subjects? I was mostly just kind of interested in like how like wide ranging of an option people will, would have in terms of paying. Because I mean, obviously, that's going to be like uh, a friction or a choke point there. Yeah, so um, we are internally testing it now that we got a ton of uh, beta signups, um, way more than I thought, which is fantastic. And uh, we'll continue, continually widen uh, the range of the beta until probably a month or two from now, we'll allow public access to the beta. Uh, and um, Apple Pay, Google Pay, like I said, all of these things, even... Um, I'm reaching out and doing deals with ATMs. It'd be really cool if someone can go from cash to lightning instantly. There's no reason why an ATM can't onboard you with Olympus the same way that you would with debit card. Uh, there's obviously inherent complications in all of these. Um, some work in certain countries, others don't. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with the consumer landscape in a lot of other countries outside the United States. So learning their preference and, and trying to onboard them, uh, how they see fit. Uh, so, I mean, it's a really cool project, but I'll be the first to say I have nothing figured out, right? Like, I know that things are going to be weird, and I will continually to, to try and work the best we can to to add as many payment options and, and uh, fit, fit the user story the best users want it to be. So <laughs> that's kind of as transparent yeah. as I can be with you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, that's all you could really do is just, like, start running down the road and then see where, you know, you can improve, making sure that you're running down the middle of the road and the way that you want to go. And, you know, yeah, so it's at least you're running down that road and you can figure out where the hiccups are and the friction points and then sort of smooth out the processes from there. But uh, as far as uh, right now, whenever it does get uh, the beta access, is that to all 50 states right now? Everybody in the United States has beta access, and whenever it does roll out publicly in a month or two, you were saying like uh, that'll be the case, or is it going to be like a state-by-state -state basis? Yeah, so um, the council, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it'll be all 50 states. Obviously, uh, again, nothing is binary when it comes to uh, compliance. So uh, if regular comes to me and, and ups my KYC requirement or else I, I go to fucking prison or, uh, right, or New York has something to say. So we're constantly working and being very transparent uh, into how coins are delivered, processing payments, all of this type of stuff. Um, but I plan, I plan to do all 50 states and globally. Uh, I plan yeah. uh, b before this calendar year is over, um, the only one I've had a tough time with is retail Japan. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I'm really, really confident in how wide reaching this can get and uh, how I can expedite that. So I'm really cautious. At, uh, I, I think uh, all the Zap maintainers and people involved in the project, uh, we have enough expectations set already. So I'm cautious to give any like hard-coded dates or anything like that. But um, but yeah, that's that's the scope as I see it today. I'm really confident in us getting there over the next few months. Heck yeah, man. That's awesome just to hear like those level of goals is like, you know, this isn't just going to stick around a few states or it's all 50 and then we're going global. That sounds awesome. And, uh, you know, for our listeners out there, if you didn't know, you could go to fiattolightning.com or zaphq.io and you could sign up for the uh, beta process too or you know you can wait a month or two and then wait and get it publicly or uh, you know we'll have to wait and see when that date comes but it'll come and uh, yeah. yeah it's it's super important to know that the service isn't available publicly yet right and that this is a beta that I'm just literally covering my behind uh, when it comes to, comes to compliance, that's one of their sticking points is to be very transparent on the accessibility. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that is kind of the current state. You're welcome to sign up for that beta and be part of a list that as we expand uh, the user base and we're ironing out bugs and all, all of the good things, um, you can become a part of helping us and working with me on, on getting it publicly. But, uh, yeah, you can expect a more public, accessible version uh, in, in a month or two, hopefully. Heck yeah, man. So yeah, definitely in beta and 
you guys, yeah, you can go and sign up for that process. And uh, just before we move on, I had like a little funny story about this. Uh, you know, when you posted this to Twitter and uh, and I saw like how lightning fast it was that you were, you know, on the lightning network and spending on the lightning network. And at the same time, there was like this whole, you know, Bcash movement to try and push zero conf again, where you see these people with their zero conf wallets and you know, so so I went to the RBTC subreddit and posted your tweet and said fast wallets a eh? and it, I got Reddit silver and Reddit gold and it got into high conflict and it was a bunch of discussion about you know zero conf and uh, the capabilities of the Lightning Network. It was uh, yeah, it was just funny to get the get the trolls over there upset about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I wonder if uh, where was Roger Slovenia? I wonder if. <laughs> I wonder if if they'll be accepting Lightning Network and allowing people to uh, onboard with Olympus. We'll see. We'll see. I'm pretty confident in uh, in what we got versus uh, what that knucklehead's got. So we'll see. Yeah. Time time is the ultimate truth teller. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I've been hearing. Like I, I haven't looked into any of the details at all myself. Um, but what one of our our regular viewers here, our audio video tweaker, has been looking into like the, these claims Roger's been making today about all these businesses accepting Bcash, and he's been hunting around on all of their sites and cannot find any mention of Bcash or crypto or accepting it on a single one of these businesses' sites. Yeah, I'm sure their volume is pretty limited to whenever Roger wants to tweet. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. I, uh, yeah, I've tried to pick up the uh, profession of not talking as much and just doing. So I'm really no. What I know I have coming, and what I know Bitcoiners in this community can do, I have the utmost confidence that that guy's going to continue to embarrass himself unless he changes something. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just going to keep shopping for groceries and posting videos uh, as we're like really just moving and changing the world. And uh, so, you know, this is this kind of marks like uh, this project's been a long time running. I mean, like, you know, this has been going on in the background for a long time. So uh, how does it feel to be at this stage with uh, Zap and Olympus? It feels good. I think it was really important um, for me to relay the message accurately in that uh listen zap is an open source project and it will always will be and uh we'll also be coming out with inherent tor support uh and a full node version of zap desktop um so uh, the olympus is really really interesting to me personally because i think it's one of the only shots at giving non-custodial lightning a, a real chance at mainstream adoption and if retail usage is something that this shirt certainly should give us a real shot at that um but i think zap continues to chug along man we've got, got a ton of downloads a ton of usage uh i just generally like community support and the amount of contributors on our repositories grow every single day uh so yeah, keep on keeping on, heads down. I, I don't I try to really avoid a lot of the noise and, and uh look back and and get trophies for accomplishments or anything like that. We got a lot to do, so keep on chugging. <laughs> yeah, man, I mean you guys over at Zap and uh what you guys are doing is incredible. I mean, you know, Olympus is a real gift to the community, you know, I think all that being open sourced and others can check your guys' code and you know, they have a good starting point, but they don't have your guys' dev talent and roadmap. I mean, uh, you know, all of that, like you're saying, it's being built on the Mallers family name and not, you know, some big other names that are trying to control you. And, you know, that's all really just great to see. And uh, like you're saying, I mean, like, you know, y'all now recently picked up uh, Rockstar Dev and uh, with the level of commits on all of the Zap get, Zap get repos, it looks like you guys are moving at this uh, record pace so what's the plan going forward for zap is a lot of it like you know just like let's sit down and focus on olympus and the ui and making sure that everything's all cleaned up or you know is there like some other big plans in the works or you know just like uh plans for the future with zap yeah um a really big uh principle that i have in life generally and that zap definitely uses is uh we're always available in response is what I like to say. Um, and we just respond very naturally to what we see. Uh, the coolest thing that we have going for us is that we have a wallet that works right now, right? And it's very easy 
for us to understand how people use Lightning, how they view it, how they view Bitcoin. I mean, Zap has become one of the more intimate relationships people have with the asset. It's how they use it. It's how they accept it. Um, it's how they view it. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, the Olympus thing was just a really general, intuitive reaction to me seeing how tough onboarding was onto Bitcoin, period, and onto Lightning specifically. So, yeah, we'll see. I think Olympus is obviously really important to us. People like Rockstar Dev, uh, I mean, Mr. Felton, Otto, all these guys that maintain their repositories. Uh, it's been such such a cool process as people come, contribute to Zap. They're really, really talented and much smarter than I am. I send them a DM like, hey, yo, uh, would you want to be part of this like in a more official role, like spend some more time? And that's just how it works. It's really a community. I met all these guys for the first time in my life a few months ago. Um, but we're all over the world, a uh, really talented group. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see. I'm really bullish Olympus. I really think uh, if someone can go from their bank account to scanning a Lightning QR code, that there's some inherently digital com economy that can foster from that. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. We're always available in response. Um, so Yeah, it's really great to see, like, every time you put out a blog post and, have, you know, gets a lot of uh, the community response and seeing, I'm sure you guys are bringing in more developers into the fold over there at Zap and... That's just always, I'm sure, uh, you know, just good to get the help, but also good to meet all these interesting characters and people that are, you know, trying to build up Bitcoin. Yeah, I think it's it's also important. Um, so for us, we just build things we think are cool and we put them out in the world knowing that they're going to get, get shit on, right? And that's that, in my opinion, is the most direct way to make progress uh, is that no one geniusly crafts some solution overnight. Uh, and so, yeah, a, a lot of this stuff for me, I'm, there's some really interesting problems, in my opinion, in uh, general hedging and more derivative markets for Bitcoin. Like there's a lot of now that Zap will be responsible for opening channels, paying to use the blockchain. Uh, there's a lot of balance sheet exposure that I assume people like Blockstream, people like Coinbase, people like Square. Uh, that people have. And so I'm also building derivative X uh, to, to help foster an economy that uses the blockchain uh, in, a, in a more business type B2B way. And and so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, all of this stuff is really though natural and that, we, I mean, we have a roadmap to a certain extent, but honestly, it's kind of wake up uh, and, and see what's good. And that's kind of how, how I've been doing it my whole life. So... <laughs> Well, that's what we need, man. We need go-getters that see the problems, understand that there's available tools to build solutions and build them out and uh, just go from there and not have the, uh, you know, any sort of hang-ups to try and keep them from doing that. So, yeah, it's just great to see you guys doing that. And, you know, you're leading me right into a good topic, like you're saying, with derivatives. I know that, you know, you've been working with those for a long time and, you know, your family comes from Chicago where there's this big derivatives market. And uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the recent back to launch and the Vanek 144A products. How do you see those evolving? What do you think about the futures of derivatives in Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the, the back launch, I think, is more so an important milestone. I have no opinion on its immediate impact on the market. I don't think uh, everyone picks their narrative and it's really tough. I mean, some days there are more sellers than buyers. Some days there's more buyers than sellers. That's how markets work. But more generally speaking, uh, it's a big deal to have a physically settled uh, futures product in the United States that's regulated um, and who's offering that. Uh, it says a lot to Bitcoin, who it's attracting, uh, how mature it is and how reliable uh, it's viewed by capital markets and uh, the people that are responsible for uh, a lot of money all over the world. And regardless of your opinion on them as, as people, uh, it really does a great deal in maturing Bitcoin when you talk about eventually th things like an ETF or bringing more volume uh, and more capital to the asset through traditional hedge funds and, and other proprietary trading firms. So I think it's just another big milestone. It's equivalent event of when uh, Bitcoin started to appear on Bloomberg t uh, terminals, right? It, it's the uh, same type of vibe is that another thing to list a physically settled derivative is, is important. 
Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like you're saying, I mean, this is something that I think Bitcoin kind of uh, just, you know, this is one of those steps in the evolution of Bitcoin. These things are something that will help Bitcoin. And I mean, it's definitely going to keep moving forward. I mean, like, I'd like to see uh, how these things grow. I mean, I'm sure that the volume is going to be different a year from now and uh, we'll see what it is after that happening and people have access and you know, just bringing in all that value, it definitely uh, helps the ecosystem, helps drive development, helps uh, helps in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I've been more proponent of some more interesting derivatives that are specifically for Bitcoin and Bitcoin businesses, like uh, hash rate and difficulty derivatives I'm a big proponent of. And then now with Zap and learning all about uh, managing on-chain fees and opening channels for users and stuff like that, um, understanding the volatility in the fee market in Bitcoin and how a business balance sheet is exposed there. And so I would really like to see, I mean, all of these stuff that you're seeing from BACT or the CME and the CBO. Uh, they're all uh, really lower hanging fruits. And so I'd be curious to see the industry mature up a little bit. And instead of just copy and pasting, starting to understand the inherent risk that a lot of Bitcoiners take because it is a really new system and uh, and see some of those products is my hope. But uh, but we'll see. <laughs> so you're, you're pretty much looking more at the how do we build the types of derivatives that let people deal with volatility to actually use this on the way up rather than just like let's add something to the pricing mechanism right i think that uh bitcoiners whether you're a business a miner a user there's a lot of risk that you take on that is new um i mean bitcoin almost like block spaces uh very unique and um limited in supply in its own way right and so inherently there's volatility there and when you have i mean block space is a commodity within itself um difficulty in how a miner mints an asset um, that it has a lot of overhead costs to produce that's a really new exposure and, and so derivatives traditionally were created to hedge risk. That's why they were invented. And a lot of these products that we are seeing from the CME and backed, um, these are traditional spot market, take it from agriculture or, or prior capital markets and just plug them into Bitcoin and surely they'll attract volume. And they're probably right, but no one has really taken the time, at least from that capital market landscape and fully understood how Bitcoin works, um, what a uh, fee is to send a transaction, how much you have to pay to get into the blockchain uh, and, and what difficulty is, how a miner manages that exposure, uh, how they can get blown out, when miners capitulate. Uh, no one, no one's helping like native Bitcoin businesses like that hedge their risk. And so a lot of these products are useful, but they're not very interesting in my opinion. So I would like to see someone uh, actually take the time to understand Bitcoin in full and offer really unique hedging tools for these businesses that can't I can't hedge anywhere else on, on my on-chain transaction costs for Olympus to be opening channels. I just have direct exposure to my balance sheet, right? Like if Coinbase is paying for user withdrawals, I know Cash App does. Uh, if Jihan and Roger clog the chain again and drive fees to $50 plus, um, surely those businesses are going to have a really tough time. They're going to get blown out. Like how you hedge that how I can safely say Olympus will manage the channel openings and liquidity generally. Uh, I mean, I have a budget though, right? Like if, if it becomes millions of dollars a month to do that, then I'm going to get blown out. I'm going to go out of business. And uh, I, like that is just a very basic uh, exposure that I have to market activity and volatility that derivatives are designed to help, right? I should be able to pay a premium to take a derivative position and know that if on-chain fees run away from me to the upside, then I'm not going to get blown out. And that's just classic, right? That's cla that's the corn farmer, and no one's taking the mm -hmm. time to do that in the Bitcoin space. So yeah, it's like all all they see is that a business is exposing themselves to risk and accepting Bitcoin and trying to solve that, and they don't realize that that's almost you could say a fractal problem through the whole system. Right. Yeah. So I think what's really interesting, or one of the more interesting products that I've started to work on, is an on-chain fee derivative. So Zap is inherently short uh, on-chain fees, right? And all that means is that 
uh, when on-chain fees go up, we're not happy, and we're not the only ones. I'm sure Blockstream wouldn't be too happy about it, Coinbase, Cash App, BitPay, whoever else is, you know, BitMax, whoever's clogging the chain, paying for fees. Uh, if fees go up, which they inevitably will, uh, your operating costs goes a lot higher, and, and that's just a fact of the, the risk that you're exposed to. Uh, and on the reverse side, a miner is inherently long these fees, right? So if fees are suppressed with some tech innovation like SegWit for years, then miners aren't very happy either, right? Like, So you have a very natural two-sided market there where there's a side of the industry that's inherently long and there's an a side of the industry that's inherently short. And so why those two aren't crossing their exposures and hedging against each other, um, that's simply because no one's taken the t time to really understand uh, a lot of the details there. But surely for Zap to scale to you know millions of users and you know we're reliant on opening channels and managing liquidity on the network, uh, we I can't have my balance sheet exposed like that. Um, I don't know how Coinbase has had that exposure. Maybe that gives us some more insight into decisions they've made of having mm -hmm. a really high time preference to, right? So there's like general infrastructure that isn't necessarily code, but it's really important that we get this stuff right so that businesses can act in the best interest of their users, their balance sheet isn't so exposed, which results in, I mean, forks that almost ruin the network, right? So a lot of this stuff is really trivial to someone who understands Bitcoin, and there's just not a lot of crossover to the capital markets world. So I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, almost like an activist in a way, like really trying to get uh, difficulty derivatives, on-chain fee derivatives, because the only way for a wallet like Zap to have millions of users and have that balance sheet exposure is if I know I can't get blown out. And same thing with a miner, same thing with any business. So Exactly. And it's like, you know, it's the, this is the one thing I think that is most consistently like misunderstood or just not understood by the more technical minded people in the space. It's like there is this whole class of non code based shit that is just as necessary as having like functional solid code. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I know I gave a talk in New York about difficulty derivatives um, and a lot of these on-chain derivatives. Uh, surely Zap will pioneer those also because I really need to use them. Uh-oh. Uh, hold on one second. I think we we got you dropped out for just a sec there, yeah, Jack. Uh, your your audio cut there on the IP. Oh shit, it. my bad. There we go. All right, ready to Hear me uh, now? pick up there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. All right, it's all fine. Then. All right, we're uh, good whenever you're good though. Um, where am I picking up? Just off what your last comment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, that's a lot. I think it's overlooked generally in the Bitcoin community is that surely, surely a lot of the stuff that, uh, is innovating Bitcoin core, a lot of the recent BIPs, uh, and the base layer innovation, obviously lightning is moving at a much faster pace for a different reason. Uh, but I think that market infrastructure is what I like to call it. Like the derivatives, uh, that are being used, how people hedge risk. Uh, the relationship that businesses have with the end user and how that's protected uh, is, I mean, so far behind, really, really far behind. Uh, how do how can I educate the CME to offer a difficulty derivative? Is there even a liquid enough market for that? Is that more of an insurance product? Um, how can a business that uses the Bitcoin blockchain hedge its exposure to a volatile fee market? How do miners, I mean, if a miner is reliant on uh, a fee market, that pays bills and an innovation like Segway comes along and you know the fee market is slowly dragging along for a few years and you're expecting how do I ensure that I don't go under yeah I think it's really really important I wish uh, I wish more people uh, in the exchange space uh, or just general market space took it more seriously uh, we'll see well, man, this is where it's just great to have somebody like yourself doing what you're doing because, I mean, really, there's just so there's so many people on this planet, but not many people have had the experience where they grew up in these 
Chicago markets and understood hedging, you know, your bets on, you know, really well and also understood coding and understood the necessity for Bitcoin. And, you know, it's, you know, this is where it's like there's companies like Coinbase and Cash App that got lots of money and lots of talent. But it's like a lot of people don't necessarily have the perspective to understand where these things really fit in and where they might be necessary. I mean, a hash rate, like a miner's exposure to hash rate and, you know, electricity contracts and the way those all play out and users exposure to block space and the way that plays out and exchanges as well. I mean, those are all things where it's like a lot of people just want a hey, number go up. I make more money where it's like, look, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And, you know, there's ways to improve upon all of those mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I, I think your users may know, but the reason that Zap started uh, and the reason that I spend all my time on Bitcoin is I'm team Bitcoin. I'm not necessarily team Zap. Uh, I'm here. Zap is here to help Bitcoin succeed. And so whether you know I work on derivatives that allow businesses to have maintained exposure, which allow them to act ethically and responsibly, or whether I build lightning fiat ramps uh, or Tor enabled wallets, whatever it is, um, I think available in response and, and just kind of here to help Bitcoin uh, succeed. Lead by example. That's why I keep marketing myself against Coinbase uh, and I do it on purpose <laughs> is because um, I really I really want to to come out, Pondy, for your move and uh, and lead by example. Some things that I think need to change in the industry. So. Heck yeah, man. I like that. Just keep calling them out, you know, keep going with that global mission, working for Team Bitcoin, man. And I know everybody, you know, in the Bitcoin community is cheering on you and everything you guys are doing over there with the Mallers family. There's a lot of uh, amazing stuff. Y'all have really helped with the community. So the community is cheering you back on. Now, I think we do need to just circle back to one thing about Olympus that we've maybe forgot to cover that Shinobi wants to cover on. So, Shinobi, you want to go ahead with this question on Olympus? Mm -hmm. So, like, um, you know, I'm just going to ignore the, the whole turbo channel aspect of things because obviously, like, the risk is where whoever wants to take it. So that's really not relevant to talk about. But, um, you know, the, the, the privacy model, though, I think is... You know, something to kind of go over because, from my understanding, um, there, there's pretty much like that that central viewpoint that's going to see like your payment information, and then this is your channel. And you know, I, I know there there's probably some ways to address that down the line, but like, you know, where where are you thinking about how to address that before I start getting into? Uh, <laughs> here's my idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. I think um, a, a lot of people were like, well, this is brilliant. This is the most private way to get Bitcoins. And once you get them, no one can see. And that's not true, right? Which I think is what you're hinting at, is that uh, Zap opens a channel to you. And the whole Turbo thing, I'm happy to get into it because I, I think it's pretty clever. But um, obviously, the payments that you make through that channel, uh, if someone held a gun to my head and asked, when was the last time channel partner, you know, X, Y, Z made a payment, I would be able to answer that question. And I'll be the first to, to say, I'll, I mean, to, to be clear, be transparent and honest throughout this entire process. I have nothing to hide, um, but that's true. And so how we solve that problem, um, do we allow other services to open a channel on behalf of Zap, uh, purchase Bitcoins from Zap? Maybe. Is that actually solving it? Probably not. Um, so I think it's a pretty unique problem. There are certainly ways to go about it uh, that are a little bit more complex and can be seen as like an advanced user feature that uh, really has a value in privacy. But uh, yeah, it's it's certainly an issue. Um, obviously, the way Lightning works, uh, we won't be able to see end destination payments or anything like that. I mean, we just uh, we're a channel partner. How it works right now, but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Let's do it, Shinobi. Let's do it. All right, well, yeah, obviously, like that—that that was uh, the, the first idea I have. Like, if, if you can have that channel opened by somebody else, then all you're seeing is the that business and not like what channel they're actually opening with your customer. But another idea I had um, is potentially like if you can get a large number of businesses that are actually you know doing and then plugging into Olympus. 
you could effectively just in the background have that fiat just get you a bunch of Chalmian tokens sound by or signed by an Olympus key. And then you could privately take those tokens to any of the businesses plugged into Olympus and be like, okay, like open the channel with me. Like here's the proof that I paid for this much. Yep. Yep. I think what I'm really excited about is trying to pioneer some form of privacy uh, into this whole money transmitter space. So obviously there are rules. Like, like I said in the post, I'm way too young and I look way too sexy, Shinobi, to be going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a fact. No, I'm kidding. But I, I'm not I'm kidding. But I don't want to go to jail. So there are certain uh, rules when it comes to money transmission, two-party exemption, uh, broker-dealer, etc., where I have to ensure that uh, coins purchase end up in the hands of who purchased, right? Like that's just the basic law um, that we all are following. So uh, I agree that there has to be more clever ways to deliver these coins. It's all about do I have cryptographic proof that I delivered them to the right person or else, right, if someone could pay and I say, hey, someone random on the network, feel free to deliver, and they're delivering to someone entirely different and someone's acting as like a fiat gateway to get coins delivered to to random people, right? So I, I think I'm really – interested in I've learned so much about money transmission uh, how things are regulated and then I obviously have a good footprint on Bitcoin and lightning and I'm really excited to be a privacy forward-thinking entity in that space uh, and and see what we can do there so I agree uh, more or less with you I think it's pretty complicated but over the next 12 months uh, I certainly plan on spending some time there mm -hmm. I mean you know that's that's exactly what I'd expect to hear from you and you know as far as like you know, all the people, oh, all the people out there trying to paint this as like, you know, the most private way to do stuff like it's well, people do that with everything. And then all the people shitting on it because of KYC. Well, it's like you're being upfront about it. Like if you don't want to use it, don't use it. Yeah, I think like a mental exercise I went through personally is that we already have, I mean, let's let's be clear when you buy bitcoin at cash app you withdraw to let's say your lnd node and open a channel with zap today if someone if the government really really wanted to they'd be able to trace that on chain activity to um to opening a channel to zap and knock on my door now can you i mean is there some coin join involved do we allow users with Olympus withdraw first on CoinJoin and then open a channel, right? So I could deliver you the coins on chain. Uh, you can do whatever you want with them and then onboard yourself on the Lightning. The kind of the more valuable value props that we have is that you go straight to Lightning. Um, but yeah, I mean, the mental exercise that I went through is right now there's fa frankly no privacy period in how users onboard generally. So I don't think Olympus is necessarily taking a step back. I think initially it's just a huge UX gain. Um, and yeah, I mean, privacy in Bitcoin is kind of an issue. Uh, so I definitely plan on spending time there, but I don't think that Olympus is a threat to the current model because the way majority of the world gets Bitcoin now, whether they know it or not, um, privacy, it directly threatens their privacy. It's kind of it's the way it is. It's not something I'm, I'm proud of, but I think everyone in the know in the industry Mm -hmm. uh, understands that yeah and it's you know like you said like you're not taking a step back like i i would like be more blunt like you're absolutely doing nothing but taking a step forward because even though you can tie those coins in that channel to somebody like you're still not seeing where that money's going like what what they're actually buying or paying for yeah exactly so i th i also there's so many things right so one thing that zap is obviously uh, it's, it's really important to us is the topology of the network. So obviously we'll have direct relationships with a lot of people on the network, but it's really important that the network uh, develops a more healthy topology uh, than the reverse because uh, we want payments. Uh, like Zap won't be able to see the end, end destination, right? It'll just see the, the hop forward that it has to forward to. So as long as the, the network remains relatively healthy, uh, all I know is that you wanted to make a payment and I routed it, but that's kind of it. Uh, and I think it is a direct enhancement. Um, 
and I think that there's a lot of room to grow in the privacy aspect of this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly not perfect. And for people to kind of write it off as that, I feel bad. I, I don't want to be marketing it as that. Um, so there's plenty of room to go. But it's probably a little bit better than buying a Coinbase. <laughs> I think so. I, I think it's, it's more than a little bit. And that, that's not just what you think. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, privacy is definitely an issue, you know, everywhere, really, when you start looking into just like participating in the banking system. And, you know, Bitcoin itself is definitely, you know, it's a step in the right direction, but it's still not private. And, you know, things like uh, the Lightning Network and uh, federated side chains and doing things like these Chamian eCash servers and coin joins and all the stuff that we can do to help improve privacy is just like always a great step forward for everybody. And, you know, we've seen a few companies, just a couple companies really taking that uh, seriously. Well, I guess there's a few now. I mean, I would say like, uh, you know, yourself, Zap and, uh, you know, ZK Snacks and also uh, Bull Bitcoin. Like those guys are serious about it. So hopefully the, those uh, companies will keep building up and, you know, things will start going in their direction in a positive way and people will start seeing like this is what people want. All right. Well, shoot, Jack, I mean, like, uh, that was a great discussion. You wanted to go maybe just in touch on a little bit on the uh, recent Lightning Network vulnerability and uh, maybe a little bit on just, um, I guess, how that came about and the way it was, uh, the disclosure of it, and maybe just uh, tell me your impressions on it. Explain yourself, developer. This is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if there's much to say, right? Like, Lightning is clearly very early. It's important to note that this wasn't a design bug, but it was an implementation bug, which is very different. Um, and I think that it's expected stuff is going to happen, and that's okay. Uh, for people that are concerned that I'm going to be putting a lot of money on the network, uh, so what? I don't care. I'm not scared of anything, and uh, I'm very aware of the risks I'm taking. I think someone has to be first, and I'm willing to uh, to take that bullet for the Bitcoin community and stick my nose out there. Uh, but other than that, it's I don't know, man. I, I really don't think there's much to say. Obviously, it was a nasty one. I think we're very lucky that it uh, wasn't very widely exploited. To my knowledge, I'm not aware of anyone that uh, had it exploited. And so, uh, yeah, it's going to happen. Um, it, I, almost an ego check, in my opinion. I, I think Lightning uh, is marketed very interestingly and, uh, and that people should be more aware of the current state, the accurate current state. But I don't know. That's kind of all I have to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like... You know, it's. I, I think that the two biggest lessons are that, like, one, this was extremely isolated because it's not the consensus layer. And then two, it's just like, it. this is learning. Like, you know, Bitcoin doesn't have a spec. So as far as building in this space, having a spec to look to as an authority when you're trying to implement stuff, like, that's that's new. And you you have to treat that differently than you would somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. I like your point about uh, this didn't touch any uh, consensus layer. That's obviously very important, uh, one of the designs of Lightning. And yeah, for those that follow uh, the Bolt and the weekly dev meetings, um, it's been a real, I follow it um, for a long, long time now, and it's very interesting to see uh, the different implementations, try and come to some form of consensus of a specimen. Some have different priorities and uh, different incentives. And uh, it, it's, I mean, seriously, learning, uh, like you said, the amount of impact that something like this can deliver and the amount of time uh, we've had working on it and the amount of impact it's already delivered to consider that this is the first of what may be uh, some bugs. Uh, like, I really... Uh, I really am not concerned in the slightest. Yeah, I mean, like the Lightning Network is two years old. We all knew that there would be bugs. It was hashtag reckless from the beginning. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I, like you're saying, didn't really hit the consensus layer. And it's just something we should all expect. I know that, uh, yeah, Lightning Network is 
kind of marketed as like, uh, yeah, everything is here and it's available for us to develop, but it is still reckless. It is still just two years in. It's like uh, early days in Bitcoin. It's earlier, earlier days in Lightning. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, as much as, you know, you're right, Jack, that's something I think people doing Lightning stuff need to be more like upfront and aware of, but like, you know, to step back for a second in the grand scheme of things, I mean, the exact same shit happened with Bitcoin. It's like nothing oh, yeah. was really established already, and you had a million people running out there evangelizing it. When it's like, slow down, guys! Like, oh yeah, that's definitely the way that played out. It is. It is what it is. All right. Well, uh, Jack, is there anything else uh, that you wanted to cover, or maybe uh, just throw your Twitter handle out there, or the zap uh, repo just get some more people your way yeah man um i mistakenly use my full name everywhere it's too late now but uh <laughs> don't worry <laughs> i'm jack mallers on twitter uh pretty, pretty much jack mallers everywhere else uh we have a new website zaphq.io that you can go and learn more about the wallets we have and how you can join this beta program and uh and yeah man the next 12 months should certainly be interesting we got a having we've got backed maybe an etf uh lightning fiat ramps um so so we'll see lock arms and march on heck yeah man that sounds like the plan there's a lot going on a lot to get excited about uh always bullish over here at bitcoin so yeah thanks again for coming back on block digest here i really appreciate you coming jack i love you guys thanks for having me Love you, do as well. Later, everyone. Adios.